Hey guys, before we actually get into today's video, I do want to give a special shout out to the five winners that have entered this giveaway. I mean, I've been pretty much running this giveaway for a month now. We got a lot of people, I think over 80 people that entered this giveaway. So shout out to you guys for entering this giveaway. We're going to go ahead and hop into the other room real quick and, uh, you know, uh, click that random button selector and see, you know, what happens. But uh, before we actually get into that, I do want to give a shout out to everyone's names right over here that purchased merch since the last video. And these people are also going to be entered for the giveaway as well. Even though the giveaway has officially ended. For those of you guys who still want to be on the YouTube plaque, and for those of you guys who still want to be shouted out in the next series of this build series, make sure to check out that first link down below. Cop some merch to support this channel. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop onto this computer real quick and pick out some winners. So what we got over here, um, we have about 79 people that entered this giveaway. And uh, that being said, we have a giveaway for five items. You have the Milwaukee tools. We have two keys, motorsports key tags. Uh, we have a retrofit kit and a speaker. So I think what we're gonna go ahead and do is go backwards. Let's go in and select the first two winners for the Keys Motorsports keychain. So I'm gonna go ahead, number of winners, select two winners, uh, remove winners from the list of names after they have chosen. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna go ahead and click start. Alrighty, so first winner for the Keys, actually both winners for the Keys Motorsports keychain. Shout out to you guys. I'm gonna try to figure out a way to reach out to both of you guys. If this is one of you guys, uh, make sure to hit me up on Instagram. So congratulations on winning the Keys Motorsports key tags. Um, so yeah, that is the first two. Let's go ahead, um, select one winner. This is actually, I believe, gonna be for the retrofit kit. Um, I think retrofit kit. So let's go ahead for the retrofit kit now. Go ahead, how you select this. Pick another name. So yeah, one winner, start there. Bada bing, bada bang, bada bing, bada bang. And, and uh, I suck with names this morning. My brain's not functioning. Congratulations for, for winning the retro fit kit. I think it's over a hundred dollar value right there. So congratulations on that. The next one's gonna have to be the Bluetooth speaker. So let's go ahead and pick the next winner right here. I'm trying to show this as one fluid video. So you guys know I'm not really trying to play anything. Um, so shout out to Ra Raymond. Oh my God, I need to... I I don't know what's going on with me right now. Just, just don't worry about me. But congratulations, bro, for winning a speaker, a Bluetooth speaker. That's gonna be shipped out to you as well. Again, all the winners, make sure to hit me up on Instagram. We're gonna go ahead and select the final winner, guys. <laughs> for the Milwaukee giveaway. Uh, we're just gonna go and close this out actually real quick. Okay, pick another name. Bada bing, bada bang. Come on! Hey! Congratulations, you are the winner for the Milwaukee Tool Giveaway. That That is pretty insane. That is pretty insane. I know if I want some Milwaukee Tools, I'll be super happy. So congratulations to you. Again, hit me up on Instagram, comment down below, do your thing, but congratulations. That is the sickest thing ever. I'm gonna be trying to do some more Milwaukee giveaways down the road, but as for now, um, this is the only giveaway for this month and even for this year possibly because um, we are approaching the end of this year in about 28 days, which is kind of insane. So possibly beginning of next year as well, I'll probably do another giveaway for you guys, probably get uh, some more Milwaukee tools. But again, shout out to everyone that entered this giveaway, but without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the video. Well, what's up guys, welcome back, to, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be working on the E91 M3. As you guys know, I mean, we're pretty much almost close to getting this thing on the road. And the the goal of today's video is actually getting this thing running and driving. How sick would that be? Now, that being said, um, we still have a lot of things to do to make it drivable, but we also don't have that many things to make it at least drivable, if you guys know what I mean. So you guys saw in the last video, we got these beautiful Apex wheels. We got the KW suspension. We got brand new rotors and brakes in the front. Um, the rear have about 50%. We'll get those sorted when the time comes. Man, oh man, does that fitment look good. I mean, that fitment's gonna end up changing. We end up replacing these quarter panels. But the goal and focus for today is getting this interior together. So here's some before shots. I mean, as you guys can see, the interior is not, it's not looking too great. And I do want to assemble this door so we can finally actually close this door. And I do want to start assembling this entire dashboard and getting all the electronics there so we can actually start using this car properly. Now, because we went with an MBT Evo, everything's pretty much custom made to fit this car. So there's going to be a lot of wiring that I'm not really too sure on how to do. Uh, I'm just going to try to figure it out, just get everything sorted. So I'm just going to put it in time lapse and just show you guys what I can do. Last night, me and Nick were working on getting the MBT Evo coded um, for the navigation to Apple CarPlay. So we finally got Apple CarPlay coded in, working everything properly. I actually had to go to bed because my wife had work the next morning. So I was like, hey man, I gotta get going. So unfortunately the navigation portion of it, like the stock navigation, not the Apple CarPlay navigation, like, you know, the BMW navigation, we weren't able to get it coded. Um, so that being said, that's not gonna work right now, but we could eventually get that coded through a USB and just plug it in. So not a big deal. By the way, guys, if you see my lips are super chapped, like don't mind that. I, I, I can have two choices, get to work or go down to Walmart and get some chapstick. I should probably go down to Walmart 
some chapstick, but I, I want to work. I want to work. So anyways, I'm going to set y'all up. I am super excited to get this navigation installed because once we actually get this navigation installed, we can go ahead and install this. We can go ahead and install that, that, that. Just get this whole dash together. And uh, oh man, it's going to look like a real M3. I'm super hyped. After a little bit of finicking, guys, I can finally say the MPT Evo is finally installed, guys. <laughs> it looks so, so, so good. Now, I still need to put in the screws for the screen right there, and I've been trying to get the center console in there. I was actually putting some spacers underneath this screw right over here. I don't know if you guys can see on this side, but I basically put some spacers. That was super jank, and I was just, you know, trying to see if that actually made a difference, and it made a tremendous difference. So I actually went down to pick a point. I picked up these two parts over here. Now, I could have honestly just put these in my pocket and took them home uh, because, I mean, they're just kind of like trim pieces. I mean, I put it screws. I put them in my pocket. I feel like screws you can just buy. You can just take those. Um, but brackets, I feel like you have to pay for them. So we ended up paying for these. It was like ten dollars for both of them at pick and pull. Not a bad deal considering that it's gonna make a tremendous difference with the interior. And basically, how this thing sits is on this side, underneath the screw hole, it's gonna basically make a spacer and hold the wires at the same time on both sides. So again, we're we're trying to go above and beyond in this build. We might as well use all the OEM parts. I got this off another pick and pull car. Let's just go ahead, get that installed, and should fix our gap issue. So after removing these spaces that I pretty much just put in there um without actually using these bracket pieces when you tie it up the dash is gonna have a gap like this so you kind of need those plastic pieces to have a flush gap like that and again i'm just very picky for some of you guys you probably don't care for me i care and now that those plastic things are set in place i'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the center console tighten those bolts up and hopefully our gap is a-okay finally after that pick and pull run guys uh that looks like an oem gap so i'm pretty happy with that finally everything's actually stored over here nothing is moving we got all our wires pretty much routed the way it's supposed to be so at this point guys i'm gonna set y'all on time lapse and we're gonna start assembling this dashboard because that's some exciting stuff Guys, the interior is looking so, so, so good. Honestly, I am just mind boggled on how this interior is coming together. But the next couple of things I'm going to go ahead and install is this brand new cup holder I got from BMW. This is the driver's cup holder, the cup holder that always fails. Went ahead and got a brand new one for the wagon. And I also got the cup holder trim right over here, brand new from BMW. So this is going to look super clean once we put it on. So now that we have all this stuff in here, technically I can just throw in a driver's seat and then put on the exhaust and drive this thing out of here. But honestly, I'm gonna start buttoning up some more stuff for the interior. So we have the glove box sitting right over here. And this glove box came out of the M3. And you guys can see right here, it doesn't actually have a USB port. So we're gonna go ahead and do, so we can wire in a USB port for the MBT Evo, is actually just replace this cap right over here with this USB. So it'll be an OEM USB port on this car, which is gonna look super clean. We can plug that in and then bada bing, bada bang, we can access our USB from right over here.
just like that, guys, you finally got everything pretty much cleaned up. I mean, this could definitely use some more purple power. Definitely can. But as for now, guys, I'm just super happy to get this stuff together. I'm just super happy with like the little details. For example, BMW battery, the Alpha One upgraded amplifier. Like this little things that you guys can see like right here on the sides. It just looks so cool. This right here is the OEM factory pump in unused condition from the M3. So it's just like a little nice detail to have right over here. As you guys know from the wiring video, we did an absolute superb job doing all the rewiring into the back. And when I say I, uh, I mean mostly Nick, but uh, <laughs> guys, we absolutely killed it. Keyless entry is working. MBT Evo is working. Let's go ahead and close that, close that. Bada bing, bada bang. We got Apple CarPlay. Oh, that is so sick. That is a factory Apple CarPlay, guys. That just looks so, so, so sick. Look at this beautiful brand new shifter. This actually came with the E90 M3 that I purchased. And so are these buttons in absolute mint condition. I actually got this mint control right over here to fit up with this custom made carbon fiber centerpiece like guys the attention to detail brand new cup holder brand new trim piece this steering wheel is in absolute horrific condition i actually put the good steering wheel that came in that m3 the silver donor one into the white m3 and i actually grabbed the white m3 steering wheel and i slapped it in this one because you guys know eventually i'm gonna go ahead and get an aza steering wheel with like some kind of sick carbon some sick stripes something like that something that's like really 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 nice and custom for this car and i definitely want to get some carbon to match with that center console so it's definitely gonna be some carbon not gonna be overkill maybe just like an orange stripe to match the paint and then rest of it's carbon and leather like nothing too crazy i was thinking about doing some shift lights on there but uh it's a manual it's a manual and i, I don't really think i really need that for a manual but oh my god guys the progress of progress so before we actually get into putting the seats in the car the next thing i want to go ahead and do is just fix the wiring to the tail lights the tail lights right now are coated but they're not really repinned properly so right now like the daytime running lights are the reverse lights and you know all that kind of stuff so i'm just gonna go ahead and get these tail lights re and then right after that honestly we're gonna start working on the interior and probably get all the seats in here i'm actually thinking about all four seats guys like honestly i think it's gonna be super sick for those of you guys who've been here since the beginning of this build um the original interior in this wagon was gray interior and it was absolutely ugly like super ugly but the plus side of it the om3 interior was gray as well um and uh i mean it's gray and black way i mean the m3 interior is way nicer gray like i actually wouldn't i wouldn't mind the m3 interior gray um the the factory e90 um gray is just horrendous but it's close it's close enough to each other so what i'm thinking is actually putting the oem rear seats into this car and then as far as the front seats i'm actually going to put the two m3 seats in the front the reason i'm not putting the m3 seats in the rear is because the rear seats are not the same in e90 and e91 so i will have to get like pretty much the leather ripped off of the e90 m3 seats and restitch onto the e91 seats um but long story short i don't even know if i'm going to stick with this gray interior the gray interior is not fold down so that's going to be an issue when trying to get that reskinned and it doesn't have front heated seats which is just a huge thing for a car that you know i'm trying to build the ultimate e91 i want heated seats in this car so i'm definitely going to probably be looking out for another interior and not to mention the rear door cards on the e91 and the e90 m3 interior i have does not have rear speaker cutouts um, for the rear speaker retrofit that we did on this so uh long story short the E90 M3 interior that we have for this car, I'm going to have to end up selling it. It works for now when it's absolutely mint condition, but ultimately for everything to function, you know, like the speakers to have heated seats, to have fold down rear seats from the E91, we will need to find another interior. And I'm, and I'm on the lookout for maybe a red interior, but more towards like, honestly, like a cloth interior. I think a cloth interior, black cloth would really be super nice. And I know those are super rare to find. And that is why I'm willing to settle right now with the gray interior until we can actually get that cloth or red. And then uh, we'll swap everything and then we'll sell the other stuff. And you know, we'll We'll do what we need to do. But yeah, without further ado, let's just go ahead and sort out these taillights so we can finally get the seats in here. I am stoked. And I'm happy to say I finally got the wiring sorted on this side. So now these finally match. When I put it in reverse, that actually kicks in. So these si this side's finally sorted out. So now I've got to figure out what's going on with this side.
So now that the tail lights are sorted and the interior is looking really fresh, now it's time to finally install these two seats. So you have the driver passenger seat. And theoretically, we shouldn't have any airbag lights because we have everything else connected. And uh, that'll be the true test. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the lights once we have to get the seats inside because I really wanna see, is the airbag light gone? Guys, seeing the progress is just so surreal. <laughs> this is crazy. Everything's bolting up so far so good. I'm just so excited. Let's just go ahead and get the passenger seat. I don't know if you guys are noticing, I'm putting everything from the back seats to the front. I don't wanna damage the dash because this dash came out of a super low mileage car. This dash actually didn't even come out of the donor car. Me and my boy Alon picked up like a 30,000 mileage uh, 328 that was totaled M Sport. And I actually took that glove box, took that dashboard. Um, I took a few other little pieces from that car for this car because I want everything be absolutely immaculate so i really don't want to damage anything so i'm actually dragging the seats from the rear doors to the front even if i damage anything from the rear everything back here is cheap and replaceable but all these main components imagine the carbon the shift knob i mean the steering wheel in this case who cares <laughs> things are already pretty messed up but, but you guys know what i mean um so anyways let's go ahead and get the second seat in here we really don't have to watch well, yes we do we do for the airbag coat so uh yeah let's get it in there Guys, I am speechless. Look how mint this interior has become. Like, oh my god. Now, obviously, this gray is it's not it's not exactly what I want to be honest for this interior. So I'm not really seeing, especially not with the fact that the car is painted orange yet. I feel like the gray will look a little better if we have the car orange. But in the meantime, I mean, at least the seats are in absolutely immaculate condition because these are non-heated. Heated seats tend to have more wear and tear. Um, so these ones, um, honestly, because they're not heated, they're in absolutely immaculate immaculate condition but um they will do for now it's not my favorite color in the world but guys I mean, we finally have the full interior together i'm gonna actually go put power to this car and go ahead and clear the codes and see what actually sticks but in all honesty i do think that everything airbag related the front sent the front crash sensors the mid crash sensors and the rear sensors are all hooked up so theoretically um we should be good let's go ahead and clear the codes oh wait 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 i just remembered we have one more crash sensor right over here on the door so we do need to actually go ahead and reassemble this entire door first oh my lord this is so many assembling necessary but i want to go ahead and do this because i'm i know a hundred percent for sure that needs to be plugged in so let's just go ahead and just start putting in the door harness the keyless entry door harness and start assembling this full door actually then we'll be able to actually test our keyless entry as well because the other door keyless entry doesn't work but the keys for the ignition works so long story short uh testing two things at the same time by fixing this one thing <laughs> So finally, guys, you finally have this door fully assembled. It locks, it unlocks. The question is, after locking it, does the keyless entry work? Please, God, I, I wouldn't have any other idea why it wouldn't work at this point because you have both doors connected and everything else connected. So please, please, please. No! Okay, guys, so unfortunately, that is still something we need to figure out and why it's not working. None of the door keyless entries are working, unfortunately. Maybe it's a pinout situation. All right, now actually, it doesn't even wanna lock and unlock. I don't know what's going on. So yeah, unfortunately, the doors are still not working, unfortunately. I guess we'll figure that out later, but for now, we can at least hop in the seat for the first time ever. Let me go ahead and just set this down to my preference real quick. First time hopping in to the E91 M3, guys. <laughs> Oh my God. All right, hold up, hold up. I don't want to damage the seat. Let me get the seat buckle out of here. All right, so I am. I need to adjust some settings. One second. All right, so now that everything's adjusted, I'm quite comfortable right now. Let's go ahead, turn on the car real quick. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, guys, this just looks beautiful. Like brand new shift. Where would they have this M3? Not this M3, obviously. This is your man's. This is your one and only. But the silver M3 that this came out of, I, I, he had to have replaced it. Had 120,000 miles, and that shifter does not look like it was even used for a thousand miles. So that is absolutely beautiful. Everything works on it as well. We have the MBT Evo with built-in 
Apple CarPlay. This is the same system you'll see in a Toyota Supra 2021 or a G-Series G80. So that is super sick that we actually have that. And it functions like OEM in this car. Check out what Nick also coded in for us. There is a wagon on the display. Now this isn't an E-chassis wagon, mainly because they never had this system for an E-chassis wagon. They have it for an F-chassis wagon, but that is good enough. We got a wagon on board right there. Clicking into that, we have literally the M setup menu, which looks super sick. So going to DSC, let's go ahead and turn that on just for, you know, safety, Sport Plus, you know, we gotta enjoy that. Steering, uh, Sport Plus as well, you already know, guys. But actually, look at the animation too, with the wagon. <laughs> I know for sure there's other wagon builds out there. A couple of you guys linked it to me on Instagram. I know there's like two or three, I don't know. I, I know there's at least a handful. Like I know there's a purple one. I know there's a gray one. I know there's a silver one. And uh, I think there's a blue one that was like pretty much the body's been converted, but not the actual engine and drivetrain, just the body. So I don't know if I consider that an E91 M3. That's just kind of like, you know, a body kit. So technically maybe four of them out there, but this one I guarantee you guys is gonna be the best spec one out there with every little detail taken into account. I mean, I know a lot of those other E91 M3s, they look good on videos, uh, but the little details, it's just not there. Oh, actually, there's another blue one. There's a dark blue one that I actually follow him on Instagram. His is very clean, so I'm not gonna lie. That one, that one's super clean. But anyways, now that we're in the car, you guys can see that we actually have the airbag light and the seatbelt light. If we go over here as well, let's try to figure out vehicle settings, vehicle status. Okay, tire pressure. Nope, no, no, no. Service required. Okay, so, oh, no, not service. Check controls. All right, so we have restraint system right here and then brake system drive moderately so let's go ahead and clear the lights and see what actually comes back from this entire mess obviously we still have all the headlights disconnected and a bunch of other things but this should be pretty good so we are scanning the car right now let's, let's just go ahead and see if we have any major faults and clear everything we're not going to start off the car until we get the exhaust in the car but hopefully hopefully at least the airbag light will disappear or if not at least we'll figure out what's going on so after running the codes we only have 49 faults honestly guys for a car that we fully put together 49 faults is absolutely nothing i purchased cars um that literally were running in driving cars with over 100 faults so this is actually pretty impressive so going into airbag we do have a million cadillion things and that is completely understandable i'm not even going to go through this because we did hook up a lot more things for oil module dynamic system whatever whatever engine so we do have one engine dme brake light test switch plausibility so this was actually something that i forgot to plug in and i think that is the reason why the engine wouldn't turn over anymore so i actually got that reconnected so so by clearing these codes it should be able to help us solve a lot of these issues right now so without further ado moment of truth will the airbag restraint system disappear that is that is the question come on do 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 so unfortunately, after clearing the faults, uh, the restraint system malfunction is still there. So let's go ahead and check the codes and see why that is exactly. So now after clearing the codes, we no longer have an engine one, which is super good, uh, but we do have one issue for airbags. So what is that exactly? Safety battery terminal. Okay, so that is actually something we could definitely deal with. So let's figure out what cable that is and get that replaced real quick. Guys, okay, so after unplugging everything in the rear and plugging it back in, bada bing, bada bing, restraint system gone, airbag light is officially gone. I honestly couldn't believe the fact that I just unplugged everything, replugged it in, and it actually worked. I, I, it was low hopes, but every, everything was supposed to be good. It's kind of weird because I looked at everything back there and I was like, everything is connected. So I just disconnected everything. Maybe it was just something was loose and I reconnected everything. And then, and oh my God, guys, the, the, the airbag light's actually gone. Now there is a slight issue that's a bit concerning. When I say slight, I mean kind of big. I'm hoping it's slight. I'm actually going through this menu right now and it's saying brake system uh, malfunction. Okay, that's whatever. Reverse lamp, uh, rear left. Um, So I don't know. There's a bunch of like tail light faults and there's a bunch of brake light faults. And I don't know what could possibly be causing the brake light fault, to be honest with you guys, because everything was dialed in. So I don't know. We even have brake fluids in the system. Tail lights were replaced. We repinned them. Maybe, maybe they need to be coated. I, I'm not, I'm not sure. Actually, no, I'm pretty sure they need to be coated actually. So I'll go ahead and start making a list of things that probably needs to get coated. Maybe even this DSC pump needs to be coated as well. So we need to figure out all that kind of stuff considering that it is a manual now and the brake fluids are also not going to the clutch. Possibly, possibly not too sure. But guys, I'm not going to lie. The fact that the airbag light is gone. I mean, this is, this is insane. We finally have a, an E91 M3. And also not to mention, we have no more 
more engine faults either, which is super nice. So um, yeah, I mean, theoretically, once we get the exhaust on tomorrow, it should be a run and drive. I'm gonna go ahead and conclude this for today. The goal for tomorrow is that I'm actually gonna try to put in some more fluids into the transmission because we did lose a little bit. Um, and then we're also gonna be putting up the exhaust into the car as well. So at least we can start this thing and actually try to drive it. That'd be pretty crazy. I don't know if we could drive it with these rear wheels. I might have to get some like spares for now, but if we can start this thing up, move it and just move it around and you know, possibly even make room for the R8 possibly, possibly. That'd be pretty insane guys, I'm not gonna lie. So I'll catch you guys tomorrow. I think we did enough for today. It's about to hit 4.30. I need to go get myself some burgers from Sam's Club and actually make it myself because that's a little healthier. I love burgers and you know, I can't change completely, but if I can do it from home, I feel like that's a little healthier, you know? I mean, it should be a lot healthier actually. So uh, thumbs up. <laughs> Without further ado, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Good morning guys, welcome back to the second day of the video. So you guys saw yesterday how much stuff we actually got knocked out and I'm not gonna lie guys, like just check out this interior. Honestly, as soon as my wife got home, I was like, girl, you need to see this. <laughs> it looks so, so, so good. Now I'm not gonna lie, for the first day ever, I actually left the battery connected with all the electronics, you know, just chilling like a villain. Unfortunately, I do think we have a battery discharge issue, which basically means something is connected on this car right now that's draining the battery and it's a brand new battery. So, you know, the fact that it's getting drained so easily is kind of unfortunate and I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's something minor. I'm hoping it's just some coding because uh, I feel like it, if it's a wiring issue and we're having a battery discharge, it's gonna be an absolute nightmare to figure out. So it, it, it could be a million things, guys. It honestly also could be the keyless entry doors because I know keyless entry doors can actually discharge the battery and uh, and draw a lot of power. So it could be the fact that they aren't working and they're discharging. Like it could be a million things. Um, that's something we're definitely gonna have to look into and that's super unfortunate. But just to double check if it is a discharge thing, we're gonna go ahead, open up the menu. Um, and uh, yeah, that's just such a sick menu. <laughs> check that out, guys. Woo, buddy. No airbag light, which is great. That is awesome. But if we go to vehicle status, check controls. I'm not actually seeing a battery discharge right now, but it, I mean, hmm, it could be the fact that we have a headlights unplugged and a bunch of other things unplugged. And that's the reason why I'm not really losing too much hope right now. When you have a bunch of things disconnected, it does cause some weird things to happen with the BMW. So uh, anywho, we're not gonna regard that right now. We're just gonna disregard that. I am hooking up the tender to the car right now. So it is trying to give the, the battery some juice. So we're gonna go ahead and just turn this off. And I think the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is finally for the second day is get that exhaust installed because uh, guys, so yeah, let's just go ahead, head into the backyard. And I'll show you guys the exhaust setup we're gonna be actually putting on this car. So what you guys can see right over here is that we have two mufflers, two M3 mufflers. This actually came off of my first ever M3 and this came off my second M3 with 40,000 miles. I actually didn't do a muffler delete on that, but the guy that purchased the M3 from me ended up doing a muffler delete. So this is the original muffler for that car. So it's kind of crazy that the two other M3s that I've owned, um, I have the mufflers to them right now. And the most recent two M3s that I own, I still own them. So it's like every M3 I ever owned, I have the mufflers for them, which is <laughs> kind of crazy. So coming on to the backyard, this is our full system. So these are the primary cats, I believe secondary cats and we have our resonators and then we have our Borla muffler which actually came with the car when we first got it. Unfortunately, one of the tips are bent, but that's not a big deal. We can just go ahead and cut that off and replace the tip. I'm pretty sure Borla actually sells their tips on their website, so not a big deal. Um, thankfully, also this muffler looks like it's just a clamp. So if we just remove these two clamps, we can actually remove the muffler. We'll just have a resonator and the two cats connected. As long as we actually have the cats connected, I'm pretty sure um, the car should start up idle and run fine. So yeah, I guess the goal is just go ahead and just remove that muffler and take the rest of this exhaust to the front and get it installed. So now that we got the exhaust right here next to the E90 M3, the only things I'm kind of worried about right now is the fact that water got inside these connections. This one doesn't look corroded, which is a good sign. Uh, this one as well. I'm more worried about these ones over here. Uh, I'm gonna try to clean these out as much as I can to make sure no dirt or water. These honestly could be broken because of the amount of water that possibly gotten into them. So that being said, we might get an O2 sensor code and we'll end up replacing that. But looking inside both the casts, they do look fine. So I think we're good in that case. See, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just clean out those connectors and we're just going to go ahead and get this thing installed.
My biggest fear is that the exhaust wasn't actually gonna bolt up to the proper bolting mounts. Thankfully, everything bolted up there. Everything bolted up to the engine. And then this bracket over here would have bolted up perfectly if it was straight. I didn't notice it was bent. I thought that's the way it's supposed to be. I think both sides are supposed to be like that. So I need to go ahead and bend this back and then we can go ahead and get it installed. So now that we got everything properly mounted, I look at the O2 sensors hooked up properly. Everything looks like OEM. The brackets are all there, so it's looking super fresh. I'll show you guys that in a minute. But as for now, I'm trying to put back these two shields, um, these heat temperature shields, to make sure the exhaust doesn't melt any of the plastics around the transmission. But before actually putting that on, we do need to top off the fluids. And I thought that the fluids um, were the same on automatics and manual. So I was like, oh, I have some fluids I got from FCP Euro. Um, but unfortunately, these are automatic fluids. So I went to my backyard and I was looking around. Then I found some. 75W140 and I was like, ah, oh, that's a little too thick. And then thank the Lord, I actually found one of these that I actually, I believe I use this on my differential. So uh, I think it's the same fluid as 75W90. I'm gonna go ahead and double check, but I think this is the right stuff. I believe you can use 75W80 or 75W90. And for my case, I only probably need one quart or even if that. So uh, yeah, I think this is more than good enough for me. We didn't lose too much fluids. I just wanna make sure we have proper fluids because we don't wanna mess up this transmission. Um, and then I found these guys, automatic transmission fluids. I don't really know what uh, concentration these are um, but it says automatic on them so we're not going to use these so let me go ahead and do some research figure out if this is the right stuff and if it is let's go ahead and put it in so after doing some research the BMW M3 transmission manual if we go all the way up here BMW fluid is recommended as 75 W90 so that is exactly what we have I think we got super lucky on that and this would have cost us at BMW $39 I think I got this from FCP here for about $22 and not to mention them having a replacement program I figured this is the best way to go well in all honesty I'm, I'm, I'm kind of promoting them because I got this thing from them a couple months. I mean, it's probably a year and a half ago I've had this thing, but I mean, I love FCP Euro, so um, if I have a chance to promote them, I will. I mean, come on. Now, I don't know the last time I used this. Maybe it was actually with the transmission on the 550i. I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up, clean this uh, tray as well, um, just to make sure everything's super clean before actually putting in these fluids. So now that this is cleaned up and we got our fluids, let's go ahead and pump in that transmission fluid because that's literally the last thing we got to do to get this thing started. So I don't know if you guys saw that, but basically as soon as I untightened the, the fill plug, a bunch of fluids came out. So that being said, I don't know if the transmission fluids are basically like, it, it's more than full. So, I mean, it was gushing out and it was, I had a hard time putting it back in, but I was able to put back in the fill plug. And uh, long story short, I think now, honestly, um, we could start up the car, run it through the gears and then check back again and see if we really have to top it back off. I mean, I really don't even think I have to remove that fill plug one more time because it was just gushing out. So that being said, I think at this point, we can just go ahead and clean up a little bit and start her up. So I just want to show you guys a few things to why I'm not going to let it run for too long. If you guys see where the exhaust ends, it's right next to the differential and there's no heat shields around that whatsoever. I mean, I don't really know if it's going to really damage a differential and stuff like that, but it's literally exiting right there. Um, there is the fuel tank right there as well. So I just don't want too much heat being in this area for too long. You guys saw in the backyard, I have the OEM muffler that's going to have to get welded up somehow. Pretty much the same way when I try to convert like a 128 to like a, a dual exhaust tip or whatever. So we're going to try to do the exact same thing on this car at an exhaust shop because I tried doing the OEM brackets and uh, the, getting those welded on with my skills uh, and probably not the smartest place. So I took off those brackets off the E90 M3. I just cut them off. I'm going to take them down to the welding shop with the muffler and just have them welded on professionally so we're not going to have any issues with that. I'm probably going to load this up into the trailer and actually just take it to the exhaust shop instead of driving it like this because again, like I don't want to risk anything. But in order to get the muffler like positioned the way we want it, we'd have to install the M3 bumper and to install the M3 bumper, we're going to have to convert it to an E91 M3 bumper. So long story short, we're not doing that in today's video, but today's video, we're starting to wrap. So without further ado, um, let's just start her up. Now I'm not gonna actually jump in the car because uh, I do have a bunch of transmission fluid on me, but if I can actually go ahead, reach into the clutch and try to start this bad boy up. Hopefully, hopefully guys, it will start up. <laughs> Three, two, one. I mean, oh my God, just do it. And it dies out. We're gonna go ahead and give it a second shot. So I was a little worried about this, mainly because we gave it when it's first startup and it ran perfectly fine. And then when we turned it off, we turned it back on again, it just does that. So I don't know why it doesn't want to start up anymore. I need to figure out why that is exactly. Hopefully we didn't mess up anything. Before I actually do research and figure out the reason why the engine doesn't start up, I'm just gonna go ahead and slap this on because uh, that's something easier than diagnosing why my car won't start. 
<laughs> just one of those last finishing touches in the bottom of the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this in three, two, one. And now that that's on, let's go ahead and drop the car now. So we know, unfortunately, it won't start right now. Don't know why. Hopefully we can figure that out pretty soon. Hopefully it's something minor and not some catastrophic engine damage. That would absolutely suck. The second thing is I'm hoping that rear suspension right over here will actually clear when we lower the car. So fingers crossed, guys, that will clear. So at least we can move this thing around. So uh, yeah, first time lowering it on the new KW suspension and the new M3 uh, fitment wheels. <laughs> okay, all right. So I think because I put this on like max height on the coilover, we, we might be able to drive it like this. <laughs> that is so sick. Oh my God. And because this is coilovers, I don't think we're gonna rub while driving. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. There's no way we're rubbing with these cold ovens. That is super awesome. The fitment is just too nice. I mean, guys, check out that stance right now. Now, obviously, it can have better fitment, but until we get the quarter panels replaced, I am super happy. Like, what? That looks amazing. Look at this girth nation, guys. That looks so, so, so sick. But oh my God, guys, if only it could run. I'm gonna go ahead, clean up the rest of this garage because it's an absolute mess and then do some more research and figure out why this thing won't start. And guys, finally cleaned up the garage to the point where it's at least presentable. Like I said earlier, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and head inside and do some more research on why this thing is not starting and probably start taking apart some things. So I'll probably catch you guys later tonight and uh, hoping that I'll actually bring you guys some positive information. Hoping, hoping. I didn't think it'll be that easy. <laughs> M3 issues already. A few hours later, and I'm gonna give you guys a good recap. And it's an unfortunate recap, but it's a recap. So uh, basically, um, what happened was the throttle actuators are throwing a code for basically being completely dead. So I, I actually have owned a couple of M3s in my life, and I've never actually ran into a throttle actuator issue. So apparently that's real. Um, so it looks like I'm gonna order, I mean, I can get them rebuilt, or I can go ahead and order new ones from BMW, or I can get the OEs from FCP Euro with lifetime warranty. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just get them from FCP Euro with the lifetime warranty, because you guys already know, I'm um, keeping this car. And if any issues again happen with the uh, throttle actuators, I, I just prefer to send them back and get a new ones, because I mean, why not? And honestly, the OE ones are cheaper than the OEM ones too. So uh, I, I spend less money and I get that lifetime warranty, which is a win-win in my book. But yeah, that is not a conclusion to a video I wanted to do, but uh, I was really hoping to give you guys a run and drive in today's video. I'm not gonna lie, that's, that's, that's quite upsetting. But at the same time, we got a lot done with the interior. It looks amazing. Uh, we got the exhaust on there. So as soon as we get these throttle actuators done, it should be a run and drive. That's what a project is. I, I signed up for it. So uh, it is what it is. Without further ado, guys, gonna have to conclude this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the like button. If you guys feel sorry for me, make sure to smash that like button. But without further ado, guys, don't forget to cop some merch to support this channel. I'm dumping a lot of money into this E91 M3 build, trying to make it a reality, trying to build the cleanest E91 M3 out there. Um, and even though the giveaway has come to an end, you guys will still be shout out in the next video and your names are still gonna be featured on the plaque. So make sure to check out that first link down below. But without further ado, guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.